Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today we're continuing on with AIG's Critical Thinking Scan series with Critical Thinking Check number 5. This is the one that actually made me want to do this as a series, so I literally decided to do this video more than a month ago, but I thought it would be better to start with number 1 and work my way up. At this time, I don't remember what's in it, so let's hope it was worth all that edging. And check number five of thinking critically about any message is check for propaganda. Yes, check for propaganda. Propaganda is information that has been curated and presented with the idea of influencing its audience, not necessarily informing its audience. Some key warning signs are presenting facts selectively, ignoring those which run counter to their narrative, and using emotionally charged language. Remember in Critical Thinking Check number 4 where she started referencing other AIG materials, so I applied Critical Thinking Check number 3 to AIG and I found them using derogatory and emotionally charged language when talking about evolution, and I found that their research journal refuses to publish papers that come to conclusions that run contrary to their statement of faith? Taken together, this looks a lot like information that is being curated with the goal of influencing its audience, selectively ignoring information that runs counter to the preferred narrative, and using emotionally charged language. AIG checks the propaganda boxes pretty much perfectly. Propaganda is anything that tries to persuade by appealing to something other than logic. Yeah. So, like, using words like evolutionist to create a false us-versus-them dichotomy where one doesn't necessarily exist? Or phrases like particles-to-people evolution rather than just calling it evolution? Or even sticking with the term macroevolution if you want to keep the differentiation that creationists are so fond of but don't seem capable of actually understanding? You know, that is, macroevolution, the word that just means evolution has created a new species, something that creationists are usually forced into accepting, especially the AIG variety of creationists who need speciation in order to explain how Noah's Ark could have only had a few thousand animals on it, which, for the record, is still way too many. So, yeah, they could just say macroevolution, but instead they like to use derogatory, emotionally charged phrases like molecules to man or particles to people. For instance, Here's a poster from World War II, which is trying to persuade you to give money to the Nazis because a cute little girl is asking you to. Well, if we translate the text into English, it appears to just be soliciting donations to build youth hostels and homes. Using a youth on a poster soliciting donations to build youth hostels makes sense. That's probably one of the least propagandistic pieces of propaganda you could have chosen. How about this one, which in English says approximately, who is to blame for the war, with a literal finger pointing to a well-dressed businessman with an exaggerated nose and the infamous yellow star of David. While both definitely are propaganda, this one is much more explicitly propaganda, trying to convince its audience that Jewish people are to blame for the war. The other one was just asking for money and using a cute kid to elicit an emotional response that would just make you want to give. This one is actually trying to convince you of something. That's not an appeal to logic, it's an appeal to emotion. Kinda like on the AIG page on evolution where it refers to evolutionary dogma or talks about fish becoming philosophers, they actually refer to evolution as a dogma several times on that page, which I find to be interesting. AIG definitely has dogma. Dogma is simply a set of principles that are laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true. I don't think that anyone at AIG would be willing to deny that creation 6,000 years ago and a denial of evolution are things that were laid down by the authority of the Bible and are incontrovertibly true. So that is a dogmatic belief, by definition. And yet, in all my years as a YouTuber, I don't think I've ever once referred to creationist beliefs as dogma, despite it being definitionally true, as dogma is a word that has an emotional weight to it, and I try to appeal to science, logic, and rationality rather than to emotion. I just find this contrast to be a little bit interesting. But you know, people can use propaganda to argue for apparently good causes too. Arguably, and depending on which video you look at, you could say that my channel is propaganda. I am actively trying to convince people that young Earth creationism is not true, so I definitely have an agenda. 
But I don't really think I qualify because unlike creationists, I actually go out of my way to provide full context for the information that I present, and I try to accurately represent both sides. I don't want to present a weakened version of creationist arguments to have an easy go at attacking them. I want to take on the best, and I always provide links to my sources and to the material that I'm responding to in the description to make it easy for anyone to fact check me and make sure I'm not taking things out of context. But yeah, sometimes you can get accurate information from propaganda, but once you identify a source as propaganda, it becomes much less trustworthy than it might otherwise be. Like resisting the Nazis. This poster, for instance, shows an image of monster hands with Nazi and communist symbols reaching towards a child, and it says, keep these hands off, buy victory bonds. So it's trying to persuade you by appealing to your emotion of fear. Yeah, well, the Japanese flag wasn't a communist symbol. They were definitely anti-communist, so this appears to be you using the emotionally charged label of communist to make a point rather than being accurate. But whatever, your point still basically stands. And actually, go read through AIG's evolution page for yourself. Try to put yourself in the mindset of someone whose entire worldview is built on the idea that the Earth is only 6,000 years old and that evolution doesn't happen. You see... I've been very conservative when assigning emotional weight to the words that they've been using, but being a former Young Earth creationist myself, I can tell you that there is a lot of loaded language in there that your average evolution accepting person might not even realize is loaded language, like millions of years. That phrase has a very negative association for creationists, but won't necessarily raise any red flags among non-creationist readers. Now pair that with the phrase adding to the Bible, as though you're adding something into the Bible that wasn't there in the first place, and you're adding the scary concept of sin onto the belief in millions of years. If you're a Christian and you believe in millions of years, that means that you're adding on to the Bible, and the Bible says not to add on to the Bible, so a belief in millions of years is sinful. Never mind that the Bible never actually states a time period, that's all based on interpretation. You don't have to add anything into the Bible to find millions of years, you just have to interpret it in ways other than literal. And considering the fact that not one single Christian creationist or otherwise takes the entire Bible as 100% literal, it then becomes a matter of debate about hermeneutics rather than a black and white issue. But AIG wants you to believe it's black and white so they can scare Christians into thinking negatively about deep time and evolution. Commercials, however, often use the propaganda technique of positive associations. They'll show you happy people drinking pop in happy places so that you'll link pop to happy things and want to drink it too. Kind of like how AIG puts happy music in the background of all of these videos so that we'll have happy associations with this content. But some messages in culture link the Bible to negative things like child abuse. I mean, the Bible literally says that you hate your child if you do not beat them with a rod. It doesn't get more abusive than beating someone with a weapon. They'll say that teaching kids the Bible is on par with locking kids in basements. Oh, you're talking about how religious indoctrination has been equated with child abuse. Well, there are definitely some who have said that, and some who would take a hard stance and say that raising a child with religion is child abuse even if it's not an extremist version of the religion. But I'd say it's more nuanced than that. Certainly, keeping a child isolated from the rest of the world can amount to a form of emotional abuse, but a religious upbringing is not necessarily abusive. That's not really a logical argument against the Bible, it's just propaganda. No, you see, the Bible literally says to abuse your child or you don't love them. That's where the confusion came in, because I'm not used to making emotional arguments, so I don't think I've ever made a video addressing whether or not I think raising kids religious amounts to child abuse, because most of the time it's entirely irrelevant to whatever points I am discussing. So rationally, the Bible literally says to beat your kids with a rod. It also has the death penalty for being a disobedient kid. So I can make the logical argument that the Bible advocates child abuse. That is not an appeal to emotion, that's just quoting Bible verses. So is labeling. So like when you use the label communist for the Japanese Empire's flag just now when the Japanese Empire was most definitely anti-communist? Or the AIG evolution page that labels anyone who accepts evolution as an evolutionist? I know some exist out there who would, but most people who accept evolution would not identify with that label. And yet it is found all throughout AIG's material. As far as me applying labels or name-calling towards others, 
I try to avoid that. I do poke fun occasionally, and I generally try to apply labels that I have heard them use for themselves. In the case of creationists, most are perfectly comfortable identifying as creationist. In fact, I went to AIG's website to get an example of them referring to themselves as creationist, and the first article being promoted on their homepage as of this recording is Miss Engler's blog, talking all about how creationists are often accused of using logical fallacies. She uses the word creationist to refer to people who hold the same young earth creationist viewpoints as she does, so I feel comfortable in applying that label to her. If you don't identify with that label, just say so and I'll stop using it, it's really that simple. But then AIG is going to have a lot of editing to do in changing all their material to stop referring to themselves as creationists. Name calling. Saying that people who believe the Bible are losers. Okay, sure, that's an insult that doesn't have anything to do with the accuracy of what they're saying. I would discourage such behavior, it doesn't accomplish anything. Nobody has been convinced by being insulted. That's also not a logical argument against the truth of scripture, it's just propaganda. No, if someone calls you a loser, it's not propaganda, it's just them being mean. I'm sure there's some video out there somewhere where an atheist calls the AIG people losers for lulls or whatever, but yeah, I would agree that videos like that are not a great place to go for accurate information, which is why I don't engage in such behavior, usually. Like I said, I take the occasional pot shot, but I also expect the same in return should anyone make a response video to me. And it has happened, and it doesn't matter, because sometimes an insult for the sake of humor is okay and some other common types of propaganda rely on really powerful psychological forces, one of which is authority. Oh, how can you be this close without seeing it? Your first critical thinking check is to check it against the Bible, the authority. If it doesn't agree with your authority, it can't be right. And now you're including that sort of thing right here in your explanation as to how to spot propaganda. This is literally a propaganda series by your own definition. That's where a message sounds true because its source looks authoritative. For instance, maybe they're wearing a lab coat or holding a clipboard or speaking with an intelligent sounding accent. Well, I'm a naked cartoon rhino in a bow tie that says vague in a funny way. I feel like I'm safe from this one. John Morris Pendleton though, watch out, that guy is very authoritative. <laughs> and some pretty scary research has shown that when someone who looks authoritative and educated is telling you to do or believe something, even if you don't want to, it can be really hard not to. Well, better tell Ken Ham to lay off the authoritative attitude then. Sure, he doesn't usually wear a lab coat to the best of my knowledge, but he definitely speaks very authoritatively, as if anyone who disagrees with him would be stupid to disagree. Another powerful force is conformity. Humans are socially wired creatures. Yeah. There have been studies where they'll have someone face the wrong way in an elevator, and as people get on, they'll feel awkward facing the right way when there's someone facing the wrong way, so they turn around and face the wrong way too. But that's not the end of the story. Further research has shown that it doesn't take much to snap people out of this groupthink. Having just one person go against the crowd gives most other people the boost they need to defy the group as well. This can also be extrapolated to opinion. When there is a diversity of opinion, the individual is more likely to share what they really think on a subject, but when there is uniformity of opinion, the individual is more likely to agree with the group out of social pressure. So, if promoting groupthink is a sign of propaganda, who is closer to being propaganda? Answers in Genesis for whom you must agree to a statement of faith before you can begin working for them or publish anything with them? Or the entire scientific establishment made up of millions of scientists of all kinds of different worldviews, religions, and opinions who can all agree that evolution happens? We want to follow each other and be like other people and be accepted and liked. So a lot of propaganda appeals to our desire for conformity, harnessing what's called the bandwagon effect. Yeah, this is the one spot where I might consider giving AIG a pass. They love to play the underdog, pretending that they are persecuted and turning every little perceived slight into a personal attack. Just go and watch Paula Gia's video where he had the creator of VeggieTales on to talk about Ken Ham's rant against him. Phil Vischer made a video about the history of evangelicalism, and at one point in the video, he lists the signs of a resurgence of fundamentalism. And when he gets to the point, the rejection of mainstream science, he included a picture of Ken Ham, which is visible for less than two seconds in his 22 minute video. The rejection of mainstream science, the belief that the world is out to get us. Ken was never 
never mentioned by name, he was never insulted, he was just shown as an example of a fundamentalist who rejects mainstream science. Ken then had a segment on Answers News about this, where he complained for almost 10 minutes about a Twitter interaction with Phil Vischer that happened as a result of his face being in Vischer's video for less than two seconds. His problem, according to what he's saying in Answers News here, is that Phil called him an extremist. Except that Phil did not call him an extremist. But then he went on to say this. Actually, I don't mind if someone calls me an extremist for believing the Bible. <laughs> so, yeah, AIG likes to be the underdog, which, actually, come to think of it, is part of the propaganda campaign. If you are a young Earth creationist who agrees with AIG, then you'd better support them. Without your support, evil people like the creator of VeggieTales, might win. Their whole business model relies on creationists being scared of evolution being taught to children. So they bring the children to the Creation Museum in Ark Encounter instead of a natural history museum, and send the money to support their work. And then they buy their homeschool materials and instill these creationist viewpoints in their kids out of fear. Saying basically, everybody's doing it, so you should do it too. And this pro type of propaganda works really well because it plays on a common heuristic or mental shortcut which people use to make quick decisions. It's called the follow the majority heuristic. And it's based on the assumption that the decisions which most people are making are probably the right decisions. Yep. And evolutionarily speaking, it works. It's kind of a safety in numbers sort of thing, where the risk of doing whatever it is the crowd is doing is spread among all the members of the group, whereas the risk of going against the crowd is entirely on the individual who is going against the crowd. So there is a survival advantage to going with the flow. This assumption can work well in a lot of situations, so we tend to use it automatically. And we face so many persuasive messages every day that our brains often rely on heuristics like this to make decisions quickly, bypassing logical processing. More than that, there's actually evidence to suggest that our brains make decisions for us before we even become consciously aware of the decision. And what's more, split brain experiments show us that our brains will create excuses on the fly about why they are doing an action, never relying on I don't know, even when that would be the correct answer. Our brains have inside them what researchers have dubbed an interpreter, meaning our brains make decisions and then it is up to the interpreter to figure out why that decision was made after the fact. In split brain patients, their corpus callosum has been severed as a treatment for epilepsy. The corpus callosum is the main way the two hemispheres of the brain communicate with each other. Researchers have devised clever methods of communicating with only one hemisphere of the brain at a time, and they found that they can ask the right hemisphere to perform a task, and then when asking the left hemisphere about why they were doing the task, it would make up reasons why they were doing it, none of them true. And, just as an added little bonus, the fact that our brains are as specialized as they are into tasks that the left and right hemisphere perform independently is likely due to the evolutionary history of our brains. The brain is a very resource-intensive organ, so corners were cut when developing new features. What's that? Counting numbers? Both sides can do that, we don't need the redundancy, let's just switch the counting spot in the right hemisphere to perform the new function, get rid of the redundancy, and now through a loss of function, we have space to gain a new function. Most mammals don't have tasks split up by hemisphere in their brains like humans do, and tellingly, it's only when you get to primates that you start to see something similar happening. Almost like there's a relationship there or something. Anyway, that's just an interesting little tangent, and it's way more complicated than I'm making it out to be, but that's not our focus right now, so back to the video. So propaganda frequently takes advantage of these mental heuristics to persuade us without using logic. Yep. Even AIG, as much as they love playing the underdog, they also present themselves as being the real Christians. You want to be a part of the Christian club? You have to agree to deny science first, because there's no way a real Christian could believe in millions of years in evolution. That's adding things into the Bible, and the Bible says not to do that. Another example of this is the imitate the successful heuristic, where people may try to become successful themselves simply by mimicking whatever successful people are doing. Okay, now you're giving me flashbacks to my MLM days. Hang out with the rich people and you'll get rich eventually! That's how advertisements which use celebrity endorsements work. Shoe companies, for instance, may show famous athletes wearing their brand of shoes, so that makes people subconsciously assume that buying those shoes must be some sort of ticket to success, when, when you think about it, that's not really a logical conclusion. 
Using social heuristics to persuade people is not in and of itself propaganda. I mean, sure, it can be used by propaganda, but there can be logical connections there. Did Michael Jordan have success in basketball because he wore Air Jordans? No. But does having high-quality shoes help you succeed in basketball? Absolutely. Bad shoes are uncomfortable, they make running hard, and they can cause blisters. So there is definitely a logical reason to wear the same shoes that a professional basketball player wears if your goal is to get better at basketball. Now, does being endorsed by a celebrity automatically make it a good product? No, of course not. But the heuristic is a heuristic because sometimes it works, not because anything that makes use of it is automatically propaganda. In the same way, people are more likely to believe a message from a good-looking person, even though a speaker's looks are irrelevant to whether their message is true. I'd say it's more about charisma than good looks. You can be physically not all that attractive and still be charismatic, though certainly it is easier to be charismatic if you have the good looks to back it up. So propaganda uses all sorts of these non-logical persuasion tactics to make people act without necessarily having to think. And once again, when we apply this critical thinking check to AIG, we find that they are using propaganda tactics and so fail this critical thinking check. And all you have to do to catch propaganda is to ask, why does this message sound persuasive? Yep. AIG's message is only ever persuasive if you start with some of the same assumptions as them. And even then, it's a matter of presenting these things as evolutionists versus creationists, us versus them, the underdog AIG versus the secular science, as though secular science is some sort of boogeyman that is fighting against religion, when in reality, the secular part of science doesn't mean they are against religion, it just means that they don't start out with religiously motivated assumptions and they allow the data to take them where it leads, instead of imposing their conclusions on the data. Using the critical thinking checks that we've been learning in this series, secular science passes most, while AIG has only passed the first one. You know, the one where you start with your conclusion in complete contradiction to the rest of the critical thinking checks? You'd think that if critical thinking were the goal, and you believe that the Bible is true, then an unbiased critical examination of the data would agree with what the Bible says, so you wouldn't need check number one to come to your conclusions. That check undermines everything else you're trying to do here. That's it for this one. Today's comment of the day comes to us from Huckleberry Sin, who says, I've also heard that small cedar branches were commonly used as fly swatters, which would imply that they were talking about an elephant's tail. I'm more on the side of the dick joke, though. I hadn't heard that before, but it makes sense. This was referring to Behemoth and the line in the Bible where it says it moves its tail like a cedar. Since tails are commonly used in the animal kingdom for fly swatting, this makes sense. That said, I still lean more towards it being a biblical dick joke, because saying that it swats flies with its tail isn't really all that impressive, and this is in a passage talking about how impressive this animal is. Having a big tree-like dick seems more impressive than just doing what lots of mammals already do with their tails. Thanks for watching. Special thanks as always to my patrons, Lynn Dobbs, Mark McManus, What Jesus, and all the rest, who are the emotional appeals that reveal the propagandistic nature of my channel. If you'd like to convince people without logic, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vice rhino. If you feel so inclined, you can also support the channel through direct donation or my Amazon wish list, which are linked in the description. If you'd like to listen to my videos in podcast form, the link for that is also in the description, as well as links to my social media accounts and my P.O. Box address. See you next time! time.